Hey. Hey, you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Go to heck. No, like, really, let's go there. Let's go there together. As a matter of fact, let's survive there for 100 days. Now, look, obviously, this isn't actually hell, but using some of the game conditions as well as the volcanic biome all over the planet, it's going to be pretty close. Not to mention the horrific creatures we'll be battling. Anyhow, though, we're starting with a handsome, bald fella by the name of Blackjack. His only trait is that he's tough. He has a pretty good skill set all around, except for cooking, mining, so and he can't do any art, which is completely fine, but other than that, he's pretty damn good. To begin, I deconstructed a base that most likely belonged to another survivor who had succumbed to the circumstances of this horrific environment here in the underworld. We used said resources to try and build our very own base, but we didn't get to finish it before Blackjack got a teeny tiny bit tuckered out and had to take a little snooze for the night. I suppose it was night, it's so dark here all the time, you can't really tell. The very next morning, we began eating some berries next to this small pond. Yes, it would appear that there is one water in hell, but don't worry, it's infested with bugs and mice and other disgusting things. We began mining out a vein of compacted machinery for some components. It's going to be pretty crucial to get electricity as soon as possible. Something else that's crucial though is food. So we built a campfire so that we could cook some food and we went out and hunted a rat, which as you might have guessed is one of the very few types of wildlife down here. But just like that, we were finally having our very first proper meal down here in Heck. We would then spend some time tending to our wounds as the rat put up one hell of a fight, no pun intended. At some point, however, we ended up having an impid visitor coming to, well, visit us, and we decided that we would actually imprison him. Now, we didn't want him as a slave or to recruit, we just wanted all of his goodies, and then shortly after taking those, we murdered him. He was still considered guilty at the time we executed him, so thankfully there was no mood debuff. We then put on a bunch of the apparel that he had been wearing and this really helped us out with the heat. For our power source, I decided that we would go with a wood-fired generator and of course, as the name implies, it runs off wood so we cut down a bunch of trees. Now, building this generator actually ended up being a mistake as you'll see in a little while. But for the time being, we have a mad hellish hare that's chasing us. Uh, we dealt with it pretty easily though. Not the toughest enemy here in hell by far, but it was a tough-ass bunny. Using some wood we got from harvesting trees, we made ourselves a nice comfy little bed and then we would begin flooring our room here with some slate blocks that we got from some ancient runes. The room was still pretty shitty overall but the slate flooring actually helped increase the beauty and you know that reduced the risk of blackjack having a mental break which is very important. I would then go on to make yet another really stupid mistake by trying to plant some rice next to this small little pond here near our base. Now you observant viewers probably already realize what's dumb about me using a wood fired generator as well as planting rice but I'm going to keep it a secret if you don't. But don't you worry your little heads because I'm going to tell you in just a second. But before I do so, we actually have a raid. So this raider is one of the magical people, the seers as it were, and she's actually a succubus. And we would immediately begin engaging in melee combat with said succubus and we easily took her down for the most part. That's not to say though that we didn't take one hell of a beating. I would even go as far to say that this was just blind luck that we managed to defeat her. Truthfully, if we hadn't stolen this elephant spear from that impid earlier, on, we definitely wouldn't have. But now it's time that I reveal my little secret to you. Because of the extreme conditions here in hell, these trees and other vegetation and whatnot are slowly dying. So our wood fire generator is basically going to be useless because they're not going to regrow and our rice isn't going to grow at all. Luckily for the time being though, we have some lower level life forms down here that we can kill and munch on for food. To try and begin rectifying these mistakes though, I actually ended up building a small box like building to try and grow some nutrient fungus or whatever it's called. They're basically just mushrooms and they have to grow in the dark. You have to have them in some type of building. So that's what we began doing. And thanks to our more than wonderful tilled soil, it shouldn't take very long for us to have a harvest. But until then, we'll just continue hunting. In the meantime though, something else we began doing was deconstructing our shitty useless wood fire generator and we actually ended up building a wind turbine. I like to think that it's powered by the souls of the dam that causes a gust of wind or something interesting like that. So in other words, this colony is powered by soul power. Unfortunately though, we yet again have yet another raid and this time around it would appear to be a singular impid with a short bow. It shouldn't be anything too difficult for us, but he did have some pretty good armor. Thankfully though, Blackjack closed the gap between the two of them pretty quickly and immediately began impaling him with his elephant spear and at which point he downed him, stripped him and then murdered him on the ground. And then we would take all of his gear. 
But then we did something a teeny tiny bit unorthodox, okay? We're running out of wildlife and we don't have any vegetation to eat just yet, so we also ended up butchering him and we turned him into a beautiful impid sorbet, if you like. Uh, we just cooked him and ate him. Thankfully though, this cannibalism ended up holding us over until we could finally get our very first harvest of our mushrooms, which we had plenty of and we began eating those. And with day 25 swiftly approaching us, and if you're familiar with my content, you know I do a boss battle every 25 days, we began working on defenses to try and ensure that we don't die. However, just before day 25, we ended up having some type of minotaur bull man thing contact us, stating that he was being chased by three man-hunting guinea pigs and that he would join us if we would help him just take those down. So of course we agreed to this and he ended up being a massive, neurotic, creepy breathing, slow learning, gay brawling man magically gifted bulb creature man. Those are all of his traits. And thankfully, of course, with the might of our two people together, the guinea pigs were hardly any issue at all, and we would end up getting to eat one of them. The other two were rotted. But most importantly, we finally had a second colonist, someone who could be our new best friend. But finally, my friends, it is day 25. And like I mentioned earlier, and in typical rat night fashion, that does indeed mean it is time for yet another boss battle. For our very first boss battle, I decided to go with something uh, quite simple and whatnot. This is a forgeling hunter. This hunter works for the government or whatever of hell and hunts down lost souls such as Blackjack. Now, as you might have correctly assumed, this hunter is extremely dangerous, but they are even more dangerous when you take into consideration their infernal bionic body parts. These body parts do a lot of different things like allowing them to jump without a jump pack and catching basically everything on fire. Every where they walk and attack. And it was because of this that we would try and get them trapped into our defenses where we would double team them and end up beating the dog shit out of them and murdering them, thankfully. Now we could take their massive thrumbo axe and end up putting out all the fires that they had made, which was a very difficult task, let me tell you. It was so hard to do, in fact, that we ended up basically losing our entire crop of fungus, which we would then have to replant. We ended up mining plenty of steel as well because they had destroyed our one and only wind turbine, so we rebuilt that and then immediately began working on a separate storage room so that we can move that out of our current bedroom. After that though, I decided since we're kind of low on resources and of course we did build our base inside of a mountain, the best idea here and best option would be to begin digging out a kitchen as well as a freezer section inside of this small hill. Unfortunately though, we were interrupted by yet another raid. This time around it appeared appeared to be a blue giant man who had some type of big stick to smack us. I'm not really sure how to describe what I'm seeing here. A demon, maybe? Regardless of the origin of said creature, we would immediately pin him down just outside of our storage room and begin cutting him to pieces before ultimately defeating him. It was pretty simple, I must say. After that, of course, we immediately began working on our kitchen once more. I ended up building some lights, some steel flooring, as it is one of the most abundant resources down here in hell. Well, steel, different types of minerals, lava, and of course, our beautiful mushrooms. While we're on the topic of minerals, of course, we ended up mining out some jade so that I could make a small jade fence inside of our bedroom, a little trick that I recently learned. This, of course, made our bedroom much better. It wasn't perfect, but it was considered slightly impressive now. And you already know it wouldn't be a Rat Night 100 Days video if I didn't build some damn roads for a short period of time, so that's exactly what we did to ensure efficient <laughs> mobility. I never get tired to say in that. At one point though, I discovered something. You know, funny enough for it to be hell down here, it's actually quite cold, which was causing some problems for our little mushroom farm, so I decided that we would need to end up building a heater. Funny enough, I guess this is caused maybe by the volcanic winter that is constantly going on. <laughs> you would think it would trap heat in, but I guess not. We also finally built a proper cooking area. I decided to build an electric stove that would replace our campfire since we didn't really have any wood. Unfortunately though, this this too was interrupted by yet another raid this time around. It appeared to be two impid demons with an assault rifle and some type of pistol. I'd be lying if I said that they weren't somewhat difficult, but in the end we did end up defeating them. It really helps that we actually have the minion summoning ability on our bull buddy, who was actually quite injured from the battle, but luckily with our herbal medicine we would end up saving him and we were all hunky-dory. I had thought that we killed both impids, but one of them was just severely injured. I had hoped to actually enslave her because she had some type of magical ability, but unfortunately she got 
got away. Due to the acidic smog clouds that were in hell here, it would appear that they've caused an infection in our bull compadre. But fear ye not, my friends, it didn't take very long for him to eventually overcome this. Yet another win for the lost souls. That's what I'm calling us here, our, our faction. It's not official, but I'm just saying it. It's also worth noting that we're building plenty of bear traps with our steel just before day 50. Once day 50 had finally hit, well, you already know, it's time for yet another boss battle, baby. I wanted to mention as well, you'll probably notice that none of the bosses every 25 days have a death acidifier. Since hell is very difficult, I thought it'd be cool if we took their armor and weapons if we managed to pry it off their bodies. But without further ado, I introduce to you yet another boss battle. This time around, the boss is going to be yet another hunter of hell with a massive inferno cannon type thing and plenty of bionics, of course, and a giant purple bull man with two large clubs. I don't know, I'm not very creative. But something that I am is crazier than all hell. <laughs> did you did you get the pun? And also, I'm very hopeful that we may be able to defeat these fellas. For you see, my friends, I like to use the ancient technique of running away and hiding behind our defenses. So, of course, that's exactly what I did, trying to get them to come in, hit our traps as many times as possible so that we could try and take them down very easily. However, after injuring the hell hunter, I have no idea how, some type of red and purple lightning struck and took him off somewhere. I have no idea what happened, literally. Regardless of where that coward ran off to, though, he left his compadre here with us, and he had hell to pay. <laughs> I'm done with the puns. We ended up kicking this purple bull guy's ass. After we killed him, though, we would have to try and put out the massive fire that was going on in our fungus farm. It's beginning to seem like a tradition that every boss is going to try and burn it down for us. You know, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, a snowball's chance in hell. Well, let me tell you, apparently here in this hell in the game, that is is very possible because it is indeed snowing. It was during this little snowstorm that we actually received word from yet another lost soul who was being held captive by demonic impid creature things and we were going to go save him, damn it. So of course, as you could imagine, we immediately began making our way to the prison camp. Immediately after arriving, it would appear that there's only one impid demon guarding him. I sent the two of them in. I have really planned on trying to do this sneakily and stealthy, but that didn't end up being the case and we ended up having to take this SOB on head on with our melee weapons and eventually we killed him as well. Then I sent the two of them to the prison room. We busted down the wooden door and saved a drill mast and the three of us made our way all the way back home trying to become friends along the way I'm sure. After arriving things looked a little bit greener than they were before but it's not grass. It would appear that there's some type of acidic smog in the air. Oh we love to see it. Since we had a new comrade on board I decided that everyone really needed their own own bedrooms and he has a pretty good skill set so he can help us build those. Luckily the smog ended up going away and we eventually ended up finishing the new bedrooms for everyone. Ironically it was actually a very cold and rainy day in hell as we were building our new research room. This is because Drillmast has a very good research skill and all the other priorities were pretty much taken up so we could just leave him to research things for us. In the meantime as well in our storage room we had built an electric stone cutting table and Blackjack would go in and cut plenty of stone blocks for resources that we could use to build. We then actually had a quest from Void, which was very funny because I thought I completely got rid of them as I only wanted their abominations in this game, but I guess they just, I don't know, squeezed themselves in. Anyhow though, they offered us a small power cell in exchange for taking their waste packs and we ended up promptly accepting this offer as anything was better than our current wind turbines and I really didn't give a shit about the waste packs because this place was so shitty already. It was at this point though I realized we really really didn't have much going on in terms of recreation, so I ended up building a shogi table out of limestone so everybody could have a good old time. As one might imagine though, this peaceful time was interrupted of course, this time not by a raid though, it was actually a manhunter pack. These manhunting cobras were coming after us, which was uh, scary. Scary, frightening, even disturbing some might say. We immediately began to run behind our defenses, hoping that they would hit the bear traps and other traps, killing them, but unfortunately that didn't didn't really stop them all and they began chasing after us, they ended up downing our bull compadre whose name I still can't say. But we decided to make our final stand with our thrumbo X next to this small lava pit and we ended up killing the remaining cobras and everything was hunky dory. Except it wasn't because our bull compadre ended up dying and his body was rotten from all the cobra venom. Oh Jesus Christ. He had been bitten so many times that he actually had a serious toxic buildup and unfortunately he bled out. 
out, and we ended up having to bury him just outside of our warehouse. It was very hard for us to grieve the loss of our friend, because every day down here is just so hellish, for lack of a better descriptive word, unfortunately, and we were constantly trying to prepare for the next big threat and trying to ensure we didn't starve to death. At one point, though, we ended up having a wanderer wanting to join us here. They were apparently a privileged prodigy, as it were, but this was no ordinary wanderer. This was actually Drill Mass Sun, which of course, obviously, we accepted. He ended up arriving not too long after that, and he had a burning passion in crafting and cooking, even though the skills weren't that great. His intellectual was like his papa's, and it was pretty great, but most importantly, he was an ice mage, which was very useful. Finally, father and son reunited once more, and let me say that they were more than happy to be reunited, of course, but also we were more than happy to have someone to replace our bull compadre, although no one will ever truly replace him in our heart. However, my friends, with that being said, it is now day 75. Yes, yet another quarter has passed, and of course, it is yet again time for another custom boss battle. This time around, I'm attempting to up the ante a little bit once more. We have two demons as well as one zombie slave. One of them is a master necromancer, and the other is wearing the Doom Guy's outfit, except for the helmet, and is carrying a BFG 9000, so <laughs> this should be pretty difficult. And let me just say real quick, I had no idea just how right I was about this being difficult. I hadn't done any testing with the Doom weapons, but the BFG 9000 was basically an instant kill. So I needed to try and take this guy down before he even managed to get a shot off with that thing. Much, much easier said than done, but luckily we rushed him and we ended up using the blink ability on Drill Mass to take him from behind and with the three of their combined efforts, we did finally take him down. He didn't even get a shot off. And now it was our time to use the super weapon. Ironically, this also was easier said than done because if our allies were so close to the blast when the BFG 9000 hit, it would actually kill them as well. Luckily though, we managed to get a good shot in. And just like that, my friends, the boss battle for day 75 came to an end. Now, I will say that I know this demon guy's armor is tainted and it's going to cause a mood debuff, but it's just so damn good and looks so damn good, I decided that we would have Blackjack wear it. And honestly, the amount of protection that this armor gives us is truly something to celebrate. Now, something else worth celebrating is that we had a boss battle and our mushroom farm didn't even burn down, surprisingly. It's a Christmas miracle. You know, speaking of which, you guys are probably wondering why I decided to do something like this video around Christmas time and the short answer is, I don't really know. <laughs> I wanted to do a 100 days video um, and I really didn't feel like doing some type of um, uh, RimWorld of Magic uh, 100 Days video in Zombieland like I've been working on and planning on and this was really the only other thing I had planned out in my head so you know there's no like religious implications as to why I'm doing it or am I doing it to try and sabotage the holiday season or <laughs> some shit I just thought it would be fun and it's all I could think of at the moment so uh, yeah I just want to clarify that I guess at one point we ended up having a psychic ship fall from the sky I'm not really sure how that works. Maybe the mechs died and now their souls are in hell? Do they have souls? I have no idea, but we're about to destroy this damn thing. We began firing the BFG at the mechs and this was an instant kill, as you know. I don't think I really grasped just how powerful this weapon was until this point. I actually began wondering if maybe we're a bit too OP at this point. Nah, I think we're fine. Besides, we're having fun. You know, earlier I was bragging on how our mushroom farm didn't get burned to bits this time around with the last boss battle, but our windmills did indeed get destroyed, and that seems to also be something of a tradition. We constantly have to rebuild our wind turbines, so this time around when we rebuilt them, I decided to actually box them in with some stone walls. Fingers crossed this actually keeps them safe. But even so, our windmills kind of sucked ass, so I decided that we would end up doing some research into better options for power. So I actually ended up having Drill Mass sit in the little researching room day in and day out, just working his little fingers to the bone. Of course though, the research is going to take quite some time. Now I did want to talk about, I had originally wanted to kind of go towards gun turrets with our research, but the problem is since we don't have a high tech research bench, I just assumed that that would take way too long. And I'm pretty sure that I'm right because I would think we wouldn't even have them done by day 
100 and if we did it would only be the basic simple gun turret so it's really not even that great. The research that we ended up completing and what we ended up building was a toxifier generator. I'm gonna be honest ever since biotech came out I've never even researched or built one of these but they are really good. Sure it does take a little bit of time to research and takes a decent little bit of resources but it has a power output of 1400 watts and there's not really a downside other than it pollutes the terrain but honestly with where we're at here in the underworld we don't really care. But of course with more raid surely to be imminent anytime soon I decided that we would go ahead and use some slate blocks to double up the walls on our mushroom farm as it is very crucial to us not starving. And speak of the devil, wouldn't you know it, we have a bunch of seers coming to raid us. Now these seers, of course, as I mentioned, are witches and wizards, and you might be asking, why would they be in hell? I think we all know why witches are in hell. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to run to our defenses this time around, so we ended up having to try and retreat to the side of our base, going between our buildings and whatnot, with the BFG, though this was a cakewalk. And thankfully, any of the witches and wizards that were not killed by the BFG or anything else were murdered by our traps. For a good bit of time, I decided that we wanted to spruce up the base a little bit, really make it look good, because I like to pretty up bases, especially before the 100 days, so it looks like I made a lot more progress than I really did. <laughs> especially here in the underworld, it was quite difficult to make very large bases and stuff, and I just kind of struggled to make a lot of progress, so uh, looks really help. Some time later, we ended up having some N4 variants wander in. To the best of my understanding, these are some abominations created by Void, and of course I was actually very excited to see how well our BFG would do against them. Well, I suppose that solves that little problem. This was the only variant, so uh, I guess that's taken care of. For the last few days before day 100, we just kind of sat around enjoying each other's company, partaking in recreation, really just trying to have a good time just in case we were to die. And if I can be completely honest with you, there is a very good chance of that happening because our boss battle for day 100 is actually a familiar face if you watch my Clone Army series. Yes indeed, it is THE Void Abomination, decked out with every single Void Tech Bionic and Serum and Implant known to man. And even some that are not known to man just yet. This should indeed level the playing field. I made a guess ahead of time, he could probably sustain probably about three blasts from the BFG, but we don't even get to find that out because Blackjack missed with the first shot and then he got killed. This was obviously very sad and a devastating blow, but I kind of already knew that this might happen or would happen when I unleashed the abomination. We already know that he could take blasts from nuclear bombs and he's extremely fast. The father and son duo would try their hand at taking him down and with Drillmask giant thrombo axe he actually managed to make a bruise or a scratch or something but unfortunately that's about as far as they got as he quickly took them both down after that. In a horrible act of cruelty he would end up killing Drillmask's son right before his eyes as he unfortunately lies on the ground unable to even move. This is actually extremely depressing and very dark. Do I smell some type of revenge story for Drillmast in the future? Eh, uh, maybe, but also probably not. <laughs> if you'd like to see me continue to a 200 days here in the underworld, be sure to let me know. We did end up getting a uh, man in black here at the end, so it is possible for him and Drillmast to end up carrying on if that's something you guys would like to see. I would like to thank you guys ever so much for watching. Uh, like I mentioned, I know this is a very strange video to put out around the holiday season. <laughs> I, um... I mean, I don't have any problem with it because of, uh, like, it being hell and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's just a game, but it's kind of strange to me. Uh, I always like to do little winter series and surviving in the icy cold and things like that, but we're already doing that with our eternal winter series, so I, I just wanted to do something fun like a 100 days video, um, you know, something like this. Uh, like I mentioned, I was going to do the 100 days as some type of mage or something in Zombieland, but... That was proving to be quite difficult um, to do, and I thought it was going to take a much longer time than something like this, so that's kind of why I, uh, kind of why I went with this. <laughs> but I hope you all have enjoyed. Thank you ever so much for watching. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.